Now you can also listen to us on your favorite podcast with just a search, Faith Temple and Cog. Listen on the go with your favorite streaming platforms, like YouTube, Spotify, Audible, Apple, Amazon Music, Google, Facebook, and Anchor Podcasts. If you would like more information about us, you can visit our website at www.ftnfcog.org. seven o'clock i know it's uh uh first first uh meeting we've had since uh we broke for thanksgiving amen so uh, i am truly blessed i know you are blessed i'm glad y'all have tuned in tonight uh to see what uh to learn learn more about our god amen so we're coming out of the book of reflecting godliness we started that series uh, and we did got to number A, uh, the power belongs to God, and we did not get any further. So we're going to review uh, the power belongs to God, and then we're going to go into uh, the power to help, and hopefully we can get to the power to heal. Uh, it's, uh, I hope you have you still have your books. I guess before we start, uh, anybody got a testimony they had over the experience of Thanksgiving or the holidays since we met and or had shared what the, the blessings God uh, did for them during the holiday season before we get started in our Bible study? No? Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm thankful. <laughs> I'm thankful that my, uh, God allowed the family to come together one more time. Amen. And we've seen um, people and we uh, experience fellowship with the family and shared love. Amen. And, and we shouldn't take that for granted uh, because uh, uh, some people weren't able to get to be at Thanksgiving or be able to be thankful. Uh, thank God. Amen. That, uh, that I'm saved tonight and, and that I serve an awesome God. Amen. There's so much I can be thankful for. He answered all my prayers. Uh, and he continued to do it. I just don't want God to ever think that I'm ungrateful and I'm unthankful for the little things that he does in my life and in my family life and in Faith Temple. Uh, 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 it's just uh, sometimes that when you, if we ever reflect back Faith Temple, what God has done for us, uh, you know truly God loves uh, the members of Faith Temple uh, he is keeping us constantly, every day. Uh, it's, uh, people go to the store, don't know if they're coming back home. Amen. We have encountered people, and, but yet we still get home safe and sound and are blessed, and, we, and we're being provided with our daily needs every day. And it's because of the love of God has for us. Amen. And truly, he is an awesome God. Amen. And, 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 and I can't thank him enough for uh, this year, uh, what he's done, and, and and what he's gonna do for next year. Amen. So I truly want to just thank God, Amen, for everything he's doing. It might not be much to you, but I just for me to wake up in the morning and have the use of my facilities, <laughs> faculties, brother. Uh, I am I am blessed. Amen. Amen. So yeah. There we go. Well, thank the Lord, church. I just want to thank God for one more day for being here. I do have testimony. I thank God as y'all was been praying. My brother was found, you know, unresponsive, laying on the floor at his house. But I do thank God that God was able to touch him, put his breath back in him. He is uh, was in the hospital and everything, and he was wasn't doing that great. But now he's doing much better. He has been gone to. Um, 
nursing home for rehab out the other day and now he he he's talking and you know not talking as much but he is talking he's eating where before he wasn't eating and i thank god for how he just checked him and, and it's just bring him back i know god is bringing him back he don't have a lot of strength in his legs so he's not walking so just continue to pray for him but i know god gonna do everything that god's gonna do do for him and he's gonna come back to his himself i do thank god as i was there one brother was leaving the hospital with us home, and my other brother, he came in the hospital because he passed out, had a mild stroke. I went to see him, and he was doing good. So God has his, has his hand on, on on them, and just pray for them, Lord, that they will accept God and you know, as I say, because neither one of them don't ever want to talk about God. So they say we just got to stand in line for him because we know he's going to do it. So I just thank y'all for praying, and just I just thank God for everything. Amen. Amen. And I, I just wanted to, uh, just to uh, I talked to Sharon them the, the other week and um, just checking on them after the shooting in um, the Walmart in Chesapeake, which is, I've been to that Walmart several times in my life. And I had called them and they said they had just left that Walmart. They had just Thanks, left God. there when I was checking on them. They said it was prior to that. And you just don't know what, you know, that's going anywhere. You don't know what could happen. And uh, as soon as I heard the shooting of them first ones I called, and you just don't know what the enemy is telling man to do and how God is covering us, even in the little things that's going shopping, just trying to think of going for Christmas things and how God just keep us. I, I also often tell people just to pray God for the little things. I call little things. They 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 bid to God, but yes. but but the men they think they, they little. But what God does for us, that's that's I I can see out of both of my eyes and stuff like that. That that's the thing that God has blessed us with, and, and hearing that and seeing the hand of God and and all of that and how summering it making people up for now. You know, every time something happens, you know, people they want to run the guard back real quick, and then after a week or so, people are back to normal, but how God is, is is covering us no matter where we go and how he's keeping us. And I just want to throw that little nugget in there. Praise God. Amen. Is anybody else before we get started? Amen. I know everybody's a little tired from the holidays and got to recoup. As I get, am getting older, I uh, kind of understand now. You're, you, not as young as you used to be, and it takes a little while. Have you been preparing for Thanksgiving, uh, doing all the things that be cooking, uh, the cleaning, uh, you know, the preparation, uh, and then the people come and they have a nice time, and then they leave, and then you have to recoup. So I understand uh, some of y'all might be feeling tired, and you had to go to work and everything. But I just thank one God that you was here, able to. Be here, push pressure away to be at Bible study tonight. Amen. If there's nothing else. We're going to go ahead on into, into the lesson. Amen. I think I've given everybody a chance. Amen. Be, say what they want to be, that they, how God has blessed them through the holiday season. Saints, uh, the lesson we have, uh, we talked about reflecting godliness, and we're talking about within our circle. And our circle, uh, it be determined as the people that we associate with, uh, uh, what we do at work, uh, uh, where we go, we have a circle. Everybody has a circle of people that they associate with and that they uh, can relate to. All right. So we put as our job as in reflecting godliness, uh, we don't take a break on that. This is a thing that we have to do 24-7, amen, reflecting godliness. Uh, and we can, uh, hopefully you can see in this world in these times that we are facing now, uh, somebody, uh, if it ain't if the sanctified believers uh, have to reflect godliness, amen. Uh, go with me uh, for a minute and then, and over into Second uh, Peter one and three. Second Peter one and three. 
Now, I'm going to read it. Everybody have it? 2 Peter 1, chapter 1, verse 3. And the scripture says, According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. God has given us all things, all power that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Hallelujah. So we have no excuse when it comes to the power, amen, that God has given us. We have no excuse saying we get unable to do these things. We ain't, I'm not equipped. Where the scripture says God has given unto us all power as pertaining to life and godliness. Amen. So that tells us that it eliminates any kind of excuse the believer has of why he can't reflect godliness or why he can't share the gospel uh, uh, of Jesus Christ. Amen. So uh, we have to remember we said last session uh, most Christians get scared. They they, they don't want to they want to put themselves out there. We said we are debated about is it scared or they just don't want to uh, 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 worry about what other people are thinking. Amen. They don't want to share the gospel. But in uh, chapter uh, one of the two of Acts, the Bible tells us that to equip us, we have to be endured with power after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we are proclaiming that we have the Holy Spirit and we've been baptized and then fire baptized, amen, and with the evidence of speaking in tongues, amen, we should be no reason why you are not equipped to reflect godliness amongst the people we hang around, amen. Uh, we, we got to stand up uh, as Peter stood up and, 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 and said, this is that, that the prophet Joel prophesied about, amen. Uh, he wasn't trying to... Uh, uh do anything and then he just stood up to declare and give them an understanding of what was happening that's all we have to do and we have a great opportunity now to stand up and declare the gospel of jesus christ because the world is has hatred and and they don't understand some of the things that's going on in the world how people can relate to this and how people relate can can act that way towards somebody that they've been uh, around all their life. We are equipped, amen, to help them understand. And we have to declare the gospel to them, amen, and reflecting godliness. And then, then we came to the point of love, amen. We have to do it within love, amen. You have to share the gospel in love, not being mean, not trying to beat nobody down with the word of God, but we have to show them in love Hallelujah, the right and the wrong, amen, that how uh, you, uh, God requires uh, a, a, a change in in people, and in, in there, uh, there must be a change. You can't continue in sin, because that's what uh, Paul said, can we continue in sin? And in, in Romans, God forbid, hallelujah, if, if we've been delivered, uh, if you've been delivered, if something is dead, you're dead to something. Remember I told you about it maybe five or six years ago. We said we well, are something is dead. It shouldn't be coming back to life. Amen. I said, well, if we're dead to sin, how can you continue in sin? Amen. Say, God forbid, we can't uh, allow sin to be in our lives. We got to reflect godliness. And, and we got to do it with love. Hatred and, and evilness is, is not of the children of God, of the sanctified believer, the, 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 uh, the believer that seriously gave his life to God. Amen. Uh, I want to, it was a comment that we made here uh, in, in the lesson, and I'm trying to get it real quick. Okay. Uh, okay. It's down in part B, power to help. I want to read that. Uh, Am I gone? Okay, no. Okay, it's part B, the, the power to help. It says, in our faithful execution of the go ye command given by our Lord and Savior, 
we place our confidence in the fact that he gives us the power and help to make a difference. And this is where I'm trying to get to. Only, listen to this, only after we receive the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, our comforter and helper is Christ's promise, help free to operate in our lives. Only, only saints, when we, allow, when we, we get the, 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 the receive the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, then the promises of help is free to operate in our lives. Amen. But we have to have the Holy Spirit. I know y'all, I'm not trying to teach on the Holy Spirit, but I want y'all to know that is the key element in our salvation, in our walk with God. Amen. We have to have the Holy Spirit. Back in the day when uh, when I came through and some of y'all, when we came through, amen, uh, they wouldn't let you do anything in church until you receive the Holy Ghost. If you didn't be here, had the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you couldn't sing in the choir. You couldn't um, participate in any program uh, in the church. Amen. But now uh, we kind of relaxed that because now we're finding that uh, people uh, are leaving the church. And so the ch church is trying to say, okay, well, we use what we got. Amen. And we try to teach on the Holy Spirit and we have to uh, nurture them amen, and see, let them seek the Holy Spirit because we find that people do not want to tarry. Do not, and tarry means wait. People don't want to wait. Their patience is short. Then uh, uh, now uh, mentality, let me have it now, give it to me now. And they won't go through the, the process of waiting or tarrying for the Holy Ghost. Jesus sent them there in the upper room, told them to wait until they've been endured with power. Amen. And I know we're in that generation time where everything got to go click now, 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 now. And, and, and where we have to just pull back, the church had to pull back and say, wait a minute. We have to stick to the scriptures. And the scripture says we need to wait, have patience. Wait on the Holy Ghost. So if you haven't had been baptized in the Holy Ghost, wait on it. Seek God and and then ask God to uh, baptize you in the Holy Ghost. And, and you watch God will keep his promise. Hallelujah. But there's a selling part of going. You got to die to the flesh. You got to mortify the deeds of the flesh. You got to surrender all to him and let him use your vessel. Because these vessels belong to the body of Christ. Christ is the head, and we're the members of the body. Amen. And we can't walk around, hallelujah, uh, in sin and be attached to the Christ's body. Or the Holy Ghost is the temple. This will be the temple of the Holy Ghost. We can't have sin, hallelujah, in the temple of the Holy Ghost because it can't happen. Amen. Because uh, God is uh, 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 the Holy God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. And if that brings us to Acts 1 and 8, where it said, but you shall be receive power. Uh, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Hallelujah. That's what we have. <laughs> Once you've been endured with power from the Holy Ghost, amen. You should be carrying the word of God in your life. It should be a life way of living. Amen. I, I told you before the beginning of the year, God told me to teach, preach, and live this gospel. <laughs> so the living, the teaching and preaching, you say, oh, that's coming easy. But living this gospel, oh my Lord, my God. You can I, I'm finding out you cannot live this gospel without the Holy Ghost. You, I, I don't care how much you try to to do. I'm gonna read this and I'm gonna read that and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. If the Holy Ghost don't get you to do it, your flesh, your body, your mind uh, uh, will say, "Not right now," because it's, remember, it's a war we in. Oh, man, I know I'm, I'm way over here on this other side, but I'm gonna get back. <laughs> We're in a war. The flesh wars against the spirit. Oh God. This flesh 
remembers all that they did before I got saved, before I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. It's locked up in here. So I have a remembrance of all those things. And what, did they, what do you think is happening when I want to read the word of God? I want to pray. I want to study the word of God. The flesh does not want to sit down and do all that. It wants to have fun. It wants to uh, do other things besides study the word of God. Amen. <laughs> and, and, and so that's the war we're in. So you got to have the Holy Spirit where you can say, well, Lord, you say, get up. At, you, I'm going to get up at five. But why are you waking up at four? To pray, to read more. I, I need you to listen to me now. Don't wait till something might happen be, in five o'clock. I need to talk to you now at four o'clock. Amen. So the Holy Spirit is there to lead and guide us, you know, saints. He's our comforter. But we have to surrender him. We have to give up the ways of this world. I'm going to pause here if anybody got any comments. No comments. All right. Uh, now, it says that we, we are to carry to be witnesses unto him and help, power to help. Why are we the witnesses? Because it said you're going to be doing greater works to him, right? How do we do greater works? How are we going to do greater works? Amen. Let me read the, Can you put that B up there, Elder Wright? Where's... All right. I'm going to start it. Where is every child? Where is every child of God desires to do a work for God? Preoccupation and obsession with performing the works to be seen of men or that of our righteous right standing with God is simply not ours. In other words, people today, you can keep the slide there. People today want to go out and try to prove their right standing with God. People today want to uh, go out and try to perform all these works and uh, things that they're doing. But it's not, that's not for us to do. We are to just teach and uh, share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And all the other things will be what? Added unto us. If we just live the word of God, if we share the gospel of Jesus Christ, it said, but don't get caught up into it. If people want to just show people that you're right standing with God or, or show people that you can do great things in God. That's not what Peter did. That was the, the, those, uh, the healing of people. That's when we read chapter four, this, chapter five of Acts. It said that they wanted to put his shadow there. So the people that, so his shadow can walk by. Amen. Because they recognize the power that was in him. If we today just focus on God and the word of God, then there was the same way that they worked with God, worked with the disciples in the first age church, he would work with you because he always said he has no respect to person. So all we have to do is not be trying to show somebody that, oh, I go to church every Sunday. I, I do these, I, I go to this meeting and we go to that. We got this happening. We got this program. We got all this happening. But nobody's getting saved. Hallelujah. And that is what we have to be, be witnesses unto them in Judea, Jerusalem, Tamara, and be under to the other most parts of the world. Amen. Uh, we have to, hallelujah, not be focused on what people think of us. It knocks us down because we because more concerned about what they think instead of what God wants us to be. Children of God simply embrace venues to share the gospel with others. So opportunities for the Holy Ghost to draw exist. If we use the opportunity we have to share the gospel, the Holy Spirit will draw them. Only then, when you're not focused on what people think, but you focus on getting the gospel out, then the Holy Spirit can draw them. Hallelujah. Peter on the day of Pentecost did not stand to declare the gospel to be looked upon as one having great power, but seized the opportunity to make plain the reality of what was being witnessed by their own look, lookers. How many today run into people and you say, man, we in the, in the times of when right is wrong and wrong is right. And we in the time where uh, the, the spirit of the Antichrist is running rapid. 
Uh, we in a time the Bible is saying all of this is is, is being foretold. You know, people have questions. That's our time to explain to them what's happening. Just let me tell you, all these things got to come to pass before Jesus come back. Amen. So we have to explain to them that God is in control. God wants them saved. God does, does not want you to wrestle with a, a spirit of um, polar. Um, what's that thing called? Polar? Bipolar. Or all these spirits that they listen to nowadays. It's just, it's just to explain to them that the Antichrist spirit is, is here and he's trying to destroy the church of God. But we have to, we have to listen to the Holy Spirit and be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, if y'all have something to say, y'all got to raise your hands because I'm going to try to get through this whole lesson so we can go to number two. All right. But if you have something to say, please uh, unmute and just speak. All right. Uh, on Lucas. Undoubtedly, his actions were preceded by prayer direction. Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace in, to help in the time of need. to show off his power that he had received from the Holy Ghost? There was he doing all these works and all these things? But no, he wasn't. All he was doing was sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you see how simple the work God has called us to do? I have equipped you with all power pertaining to life and godliness. He has equipped us to do this work, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, the Holy Ghost, <laughs> the Holy Ghost, you got to stand boldly because there are people out here that will argue with you that you're what you what you are saying is not going to come to pass. Jesus is already in return. We in tribulation now, and the, the rapture already took place, and we all the people are out there saying these kind of things. It goes against the gospel of Jesus Christ. We know that because we have studied the word and the Holy Spirit lets us know. We got to stop. Time out is we got to stop all this wishy-washy going along with the flow to please man or mankind. God needs somebody like Peter and the other disciples to stand up. Hallelujah. And to declare the gospel boldly. Be how you going to, because he went to the throne of grace. He recognized who God is. We are thankful for God. This holiday season, we said, thank you, Lord God, you did this. Thank you, Lord God, you did that. Man, well, I wouldn't be here. Thank you, Lord God. But do we come down to it when you're sharing the gospel and somebody say, I'm one saved, I always say, do we declare to them what the scriptures say or do we just be quiet because we feel unequipped to discuss the scripture? Saints, it's time out for all that. We're in a time where the Antichrist will beat you back and make you get in the corner if you don't have the Holy Spirit. You got to be bold, come boldly with the word of God. You got to come boldly and declare there's love, not hatred. People are preaching uh, the word of God and using hate. Well, if you don't do this, you know, God going to condemn you. No, 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 no. The God is not, a, he didn't give me no spirit of condemnation. Hallelujah. My God, hallelujah. We don't have to let people hold things. God don't hold things over top of your head. He said, I threw all your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. I'm not even going to bring it back up. Why do people bring it back up? Because they want you to feel inadequate. They want you to feel guilty. When you got to have the Holy Spirit to say, shake it off. Hallelujah. Like a water run off. We said a little time, water run off the back of a duck. He just shakes it off, let it run off. We got to get to that point that it doesn't bother us. We can't have our feelings on our, on our arms or sleeves. We got to have this to what the Holy Spirit says. And the Holy Spirit would direct us every other way. Man, <laughs> saints of God, we're here to help. We have the power to help. Peter just spread, spread the gospel. Spread the gospel 
and you'll see people start recognizing the power that is with you. Just that they recognize the power that with Peter and they'll start taking actions. Man, look, I look, let me tell you, I went past this lady house, Mother Smith. Man, she was just talking about it, but I see the power of God was working all through her. I was over talking to Elder Wright. Man, the power of God was all over there. Man, we got to go over to get him to pray. Get him lay his hands. Man, lay. See, because your action, all you are doing is spreading the gospel. That's all God asks us to do. Spread the gospel. Be witnesses. And you, you do that effectively. And you listen to the Holy Spirit. The, the, the signs and wonders are going to follow who? Us. Huh? They're going to follow us. Because we're doing what God asked us to do. He didn't ask you to run out there and heal everybody. He said, just be witnesses for me. Live the gospel for me. Hallelujah. And I, I, I've equipped you already. And I'm going to show up when you least expect it. And you're going to do signs and wonders going to be following. Hallelujah. When Peter and John went up to that man on, at, the, at the temple and he said, give me arms. And he said, man, we ain't got no money. But what we got? We can give that to you and rise up and walk. They were living the gospel. Living the gospel. Hallelujah. My God, the godliness in the midst, of, <laughs> reflecting godliness in our circle is more than just, oh, I'm a godly person. No, no. This is a life that we have to change. And we have to stop living the way we live in and change. Start letting the Holy Spirit uh, rule us and surrender to him so that he can show us how to live and according to the word of God. That's the only way we're going to be able to do it. We got to be able to help people through sharing the gospel, through sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. In our printed text, we witness that Peter and the apostles simply went about the task of presenting the gospel at every opportunity. As they remained faithful to preach Jesus Christ, the power of God would witness helping their message to fall upon the ears of those who would believe. All they did, what I was, what I was saying, all they did was teach the gospel. All they did was share the gospel. And the power of God, the power of God, the Holy Spirit drew them. Hallelujah. Only for those who believe. I think I was talking to Elder and uh, to Elder right, right here in my Elder Proctor yesterday. Hallelujah. And, and, and then everybody's not going to believe. We got to get that understanding. Everybody is not going to believe. You can share the gospel. I think the scripture says one uh, plant, one water, God gives the increase. Everyone's not going to listen to what you're saying right at that moment. It might be 10, 15 years down the road. Hallelujah. Somebody else might come along and put some water on it. Hallelujah. But we can't look at that. We got to focus on continuing to share the gospel. Uh, who was that? Uh, Jeremiah? Was it Jeremiah to preach 40 years and not one convert happened? We can't be caught up in uh, if we be in. We're effective because the whole we spread the, the sharing the gospel. We're sharing the gospel. That's all Peter did. Hallelujah. And help came. He helped people through their sin. Those that the, the Holy Spirit drew. Those that the Holy Spirit allowed to open their ears so they, they could hear. Amen. Everybody's not going to receive the gospel from me. It's hard for the family to receive the gospel from me because they knew who I was at one time. But I tell everybody, my DNA changed now. Amen. Uh, my, my, my brother, I call my brother, amen, uh, Deuce is up here visiting. He said, I was a mean thing uh, when I was younger. I don't see that. But I thank God that people don't think God had to change so I wouldn't be like that now. Amen. So the change came because of the Holy Ghost and I my, my surrendering to him. Life is, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. The gospel is truth, I guess. The, 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 the word of God is true. And all the, I, I'm, 
I try to share with y'all as much as I can that the more I live for God and I'm finding out God is keeper of his promises. Now, I know y'all have heard people say that, but I'm telling you, he never fails. He never fails to do it his way and not Ray's way. Make sure I said it. He never fails to do it his way, God's way, and not Ray's way. I often say he fails to do it my way, but my way is not the right way. God knows. God knows everything. And we got to listen to him and be led by the spirit of God. Amen. Amen. All right. I've been talking. Can somebody read Power to Heal? See? The confidence others placed in their walk with God caused them to bring the sick into their presence so they could benefit from what they received. No doubt the apostles were unaware of the magnitude of power that ensued. They did not limit Christ's promise. Amen. Keep on going. Keep uh, going. Hold it down a minute. How many of y'all heard of Azusa Street, Revival of Azusa Street? Um, do, do you think the people that was in Azusa Street realized what was happening when it was happening? People were coming from around the world to Azusa Street. Didn't care what color somebody was, white, black, brown, oriental, whatever. They had to be at Azusa Street. And the power and magnitude of the power that was there they didn't realize that until after, after the thing got kicked off. The same thing happened with, with them, as Mother just read this statement. They were unaware of the magnitude that we didn't get to read now. Some over 2,000 years later, we get to read these scriptures and say, man, man, Peter, there was a bad apostles. Man, Paul shook the shake, snake off his hand. Hallelujah, and, and no sickness came upon him. Man, they good guys. They, they didn't know what they were doing. All they were doing was sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the power follows you. It's in you. God already asked you to open your mouth and share the gospel. Be witness for me. In your inner circle, I'm talking about your in your, not jump out, go all the way across the, the land in your inner circle. <laughs> okay, mother. St. John 14, 12, not in printed text. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Amen. It is Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. It is almost incomprehensible that God could operate in these mere men who had devoted their lives to Christ and freely shared the gospel with others so forcibly that the shadow cast by their body could heal. What power? It is to be feared that this type of manifestation is what many. Uh, let me back up. It is to be feared that this type of manifestation is what many seek today rather than what it represents. Praise God. Can, can you understand what the, the uh, uh, mother granted writing here or the, the writer mm -hmm. wrote here? Amen. Mm -hmm. What they're doing, they're seeking the power. They want the power when God's saying just be witnesses for me. They want the manifestation. They want to the power to be, they seek the power and, and, and all they had to do is just uh, be witnesses for God. If we just be witnesses, you've been doing and do it with power. The power will come after you, as you share the word of God. Amen. That's why most people, when they get the word of God, then they pray for people because the power is there. Amen. And, and God, God wants to deliver them. Amen. That's why they come running to the line because they didn't heard the word of God that tells them 
And then the Holy Spirit opened their ears so they get an understanding so they want to come to the, the line to receive salvation. Uh, amen. Because God has touched their heart. Amen. After they have heard the word. Amen. After uh, uh, Peter went to the um, the Gentiles' house, and, and 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 I can't forget his name right now, and he spoke the word. Amen. And the Bible said he got filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. After he had spoke the word. Hallelujah. After the word, after you be a witnesses and shared the we effect the witnesses for God, then the power will be displayed. Don't seek the power without witnessing being a witness for God. That's wrong. That's backwards. That's like the man trying to buy the Holy Spirit. They were falling behind the, the, the disciples. Let me, let me buy that. How much you want for the Holy Spirit? They told you, this ain't for sale. Man. This, this is something you can't get. Hallelujah. This is something that God has to, you have to be redeemed. You have to be born again. Hallelujah. To receive the Holy Spirit. So don't get caught up in the, the power. Get caught up in the, the witnessing for God. Amen. Okay, mother. While scripture tells of believers bringing the sick so Peter's shadow could heal them, consider for a moment what Peter's spiritual body actually cast forth. As the Son of God shone upon him, he reflected Christ in all manner of conversation. His entire persona as a believer left no doubt of his conviction, nor did it provide conflict with the message of, transfer of transformation he delivered. Believing him as one heard him was made easy as they simply watched him. The same man whose previous reputation evidenced lying and cowardly behavior now stands tall and boldly witnesses his lifestyle and home life supported his message, and others now desire the Christ he preached about. The, hear, the hearing his presence delivered was not confined to physical infirmities. The healing, I'm sorry. The healing his presence delivered was not confined to physical infirmities, but offered spiritual healing through reconciliation to God. Just as the woman with the issue of blood desired to touch Jesus for her long sought healing, those laden with sickness desired to be in the presence and touched by these men of God because they delivered the message of healing. Praise God. The power to heal. Amen. Yeah. Can you understand what, what that they just spoke to? They were just, their mission was to get as they heard the gospel, they witnessed life. As they witnessed life, they witnessed the power of God being shown in his life or demonstrated in his life. Amen. He didn't go there for to show you how much power he had. He went there to share the gospel, share them the word of God that says they can be healed. Shared the word of God that says that God will say, can you save you? He can repent and be baptized. Hallelujah. Uh, that's the gospel that he shared with them. That you have to change your how You got to come out of sin. Amen. So God can uh, use you and, 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 and be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's what they, they shared. Didn't go there trying to show the power or demonstrate power. They went witnessing. Witnessing. Witnessing the gospel. That's all they did. And because they the people watched them, the people seen them, they said, Oh, man, I want this what Peter got. Let me get what Peter got. Let me get what these disciples are talking about. And that's what drew them. The gospel draws them. We're in a time in this age that we're in now. They need to hear the gospel. They need to see it working in our lives. Hallelujah. Not brow pointing fingers that you're not this and you're not that. They need to see, hear what the gospel say. Thou shalt not. The, the, the fruits of the, the, the flesh in Galatians, it says all these things that people are doing, all these things, they're not going to see the kingdom of God. But if you just do the, 
the gift fruits of the spirit, which are now, you you going you got it made. <clears throat> so all of the the works of the flesh, if you're doing those in Galatians the fifth chapter, verse twenty two. Amen. I, I, I kind of went over that because that's one of the scriptures I had to read over. That. I just could not believe all these things that the flesh does. Amen. And and, and so I want to make sure I guard myself against those things. Amen. And do the flesh get something? Yeah, he get credit every now and then. He peek his head up. But I got the Holy Spirit to get, tell me, watch out. And I can be on guard. But anyway, those the works of the flesh, did anybody doing those? We're not, and I'm not saying that, but the gospel says that. We'll not see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That's what the gospel says. That's what Peter was telling them to let them know you got to be changed. John put over there in John, the book of John said, You must be born again. Hallelujah. You, you can't. And the one scripture said, You got to come out from among them. You got to set up a new, 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 uh, establish new relationships. Because some people will keep you in that same circle going round and round. And you can't be an influence to them because they're not going to recognize you or me or, or she as a woman or man of God. Why did I have to go to Germany to be saved, to be born again, to be baptized in the Holy Ghost? I had to get away from those people that had influence over my life. I couldn't sit in the cut and get salvation. I couldn't sit, sit in there and, and at the pool hall, hall and, and get salvation. God had to get me out of amongst that, take me over across the water, and introduce me to Jesus, who I said I already knew. Then tell me about the Holy Spirit, which I didn't know nothing about. That's how he had to do me. That's me. Each one of us got a story or, or testimony of how God delivered us. And it was key people in our lives that were baptized in the Holy Ghost that drew us that we said, oh, that's what I want to do. I want, I, I want what Deacon Heron got. That's the deacon that kept coming to my house, wouldn't let me rest at night. Uh, uh, I, wanted, I wanted this man, this man going beyond. Because, why? Because he had the Holy Spirit and he was just sharing the gospel with me. This thing sounded so good, it was unbelievable. That's all God is asking us to do. The signs and wonders will follow. The power will follow you. All we got to do is share the gospel. Live the gospel. Amen. The characters have set you to change. Amen. We got to um, be more disciplined to share the gospel to our inner circle. Uh, and I think that's what the the lesson is in my circle of influence. Amen. That's what we have to do. Are they going to reject it? Yes. I, I've told an uh, 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 elder of a proctor, I don't know how uh, so many people that I've talked to believe this once saved, always saved. When the Bible clearly say, and I believe that we're in this thing where there's a great falling away from, from the, in the body of Christ. There's a great falling away. The Bible prophesied that in the latter days, the church is going to fall away. No, he said there's a great falling away. In other words, people are going to fall away that's in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And we, we, we see that. Hallelujah. Let me say that. Can you get the Holy Ghost, be baptized in the Holy Ghost, and fall away? Yes. Because you don't cultivate it. You don't use it. Y'all, all right, I'm all right. Man. You don't read the word of God. You don't pray. The Bible, Paul said you got to pray without ceasing. Pray as the spirit. Let the spirit pray for you. That means you got to, you got to be praying. You don't know what to say to pray. Let the spirit pray because you don't know what to say. Amen. So you got to nurture this uh, 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 salvation. It's all there. It's all that God wants to draw it out. But you got to put time in to nurture this. You got to be dedicated to Christ. And you only can be that dedicated when you be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, run, you um, be in control of your body.
Okay, mother, can you finish it up for Psalms 107? Um, may I comment on something? Yeah, you yeah, please. please. When you were saying about cultivating and nurturing, um, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit on October the 17th, 1981. That was a long, long time ago. But I used to hear Pastor Paul with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And I heard Pastor Paul say there's one filling, but many refillings. And when you were talking about how we've got to it cultivate, is. there's an intimacy that has to be maintained. And, and I will admit, it's not always easy. No. Because it's, it's like in John when it talks about the cares of this life and all the things that we can, are confronted with. So there has to be that concerted effort to stay close to Jesus. Because I can't reflect him if I'm not intimate with him. I don't care how hard I try in my natural self to do it. It's just not there. I'm Edith unless I am joined with manifest, Christ manifesting in me. And I'm just making those comments because I'm sure I'm not the only one. It's, it's because we are walking through this life. We have to know that it's a constant maintaining of that relationship because it's so easy to be drawn away, not necessarily with overt sin, you know, running around with somebody's husband or doing some of the things that we think of as overt sin, but there's just that luring away the things like, like in my life, constant the hearing things about your health or something going on that's trying to distract you, trying to get your focus off. So I um, hope I'm not saying too much, no, but when right, you mother. say cultivate, that is so true because we, we are filled, but we got to maintain and be refilled and re-energized. Like he told the woman at the well, it will be a well of living water springing out of you. Well, sometimes the well needs to be primed. You know, <laughs> sometimes We have got to, you know, take a check on ourselves and say, Lord, I, I may be um, getting my focus off. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord, to spend that time with you. Help me to worship you. Help me to focus on you. And that's when I can go out and reflect him. But if I'm spending my nights waking up in the middle of the night with something else on my mind other than Jesus, I can't reflect him. No. And, and, and Mother, that's so true. You And, and, and most of us, that I was raised on a farm, you just can't plant the plant the seed and, 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 and go on about your business. To get to harvest the way you wanted to harvest to be a full uh, um, crop, you got to come back and cultivate it. Pull the weeds out. Um, work the soil around it so the soil will stay soft so it can grow the roots uh, and won't be uh, stunning. Amen. You got to call it the same way a mother was saying water. Just, you got to um, put time in with Jesus. You got to let the Holy Spirit open up your understanding. Let the word of God continue to renew your mind so that you can speak your words that's in your heart. What did Jesus say? It's not what goes in a man that defiles, but it's the things that come out of the man that defiles him. Amen. I was just thinking what Mother said that uh, about how do a virtuous woman in your household how is the man known at the gate because of her? Ha, my God, I got that. Yeah. He's known because there's a relationship between him and his wife or his wife and him. And the things that she do, that's how he's known at the gate. Amen. Of the wisdom, where the people, the, the wisdom people said, or I always talk about the old people sit there yeah. and they talk about that. But he's known because there's a relationship with them. When we are the bride of Christ, <laughs> we're known, how Jesus is known in our lives because we have a relationship and we display that relationship by the actions and things that we take and do. So we got to have a cultivation or, or like my mother said, a regeneration. You got to nurture this relationship. People need to see constantly, not a sometime. And I'm not caught up in all the doctrines and all these things that the world said, uh, you got to go do this and you got to have this program. You got to have, no, you, I want you to just focus on Jesus Christ and listening for the Holy Spirit direction. Those are things that matter. 
not what you, how many years you done been on the deacon's board or the choir or any of that. How's your relationship with Jesus? How's your relationship with God? Those are the things that's going to count. Not what big church you go to. Not what uh, I go to church on uh, the first service in the morning, second service in the morning. But I, let me give you a piece of my mind. Well, when you should go on two services, you still give me a piece of your mind. I need to hear what the Holy Spirit <laughs> is saying, not the piece of your mind. So you went to church two times that morning, but you're coming back and you ain't saying nothing about what God. And then, then when you ask them what happened in the service, they say, man, they shouted in the other day. What was the message? Ah, uh, he talked about something. Huh? Because because they're there for a show. They're looking. They're going. Oh my Lord, my God, help us in this time we're in now. Hallelujah. But you got to call the related relationship with, not the mega church, not with a program for the youth or, or, or this program for the the women or the men and the hungry, the homeless and all these programs. It's good to have a program, but are we sharing the gospel that they can hear it and explain it where they can be saved? That's what God wants. He told us the poor gonna be with us always. But we gotta share this gospel. Hallelujah. All right, you wanna go ahead and read that, mother? I think me and you both. Yes, yes. yes. oh, go ahead, Apart. No, I'm no, letting mother go ahead. Oh. Go ahead, mother. He said, go ahead and read. Okay. Psalms 107, verse 20, not in printed text. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. It is to this truth that we conclude that everywhere sanctified believers carry the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and display godly living, the sick seek out our presence. As we engage in the activities of our daily life, we are encircled with individuals who desperately desire to be touched by the master and healed. While they may not be impressed with our laying on of hands or drawn by our excellence of speech, they are observant of our lives and convicted by our message. As they watch, <clears throat> the, may we demonstrate such power to help that they too are drawn to Christ and healed. Keep going, Bishop. Yeah, go ahead and the last part. St. John 12, 32, not in printed text. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Amen. All right, Elder Proctor. Oh, praise the Lord. Um, Bishop, you woke me up when you talked about that man sitting there in the gate. But uh, let me... Uh, Go to verse 38 in Mark 8. It says, Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh to the glory of his Father with the holy angels. It's easy for us to testify in church. It's easy for us to testify among the saints when we're at dinner and we got everybody believing the same thing. But it's not easy witness to someone on the street corner. It's not witness, easy to witness to someone in your workplace when everybody's a heathen or appears to be a heathen. So it's not easy for the saints, but without the Holy Ghost, you're going to keep quiet like so many of us do we're guilty hallelujah god and god got our record and i say Al, i guess i should say god got my record because i don't witness this times when i should witness it tells us to be instant in season hallelujah god and country folks know what it means to be in season but when the time comes Look like we're just not ready. Just don't want to say it to him because he might not want to hear what I have to say. But the scripture tells us we got to be a witness for the Lord. He said, if I be lifted up, and he don't mean to be crucified. He means if you lift up Jesus, he'll draw them to him. 
So when you see the, the scriptures, it doesn't always mean what exactly what it says. We know that if he be lifted up, he was crucified. But if we lift him up, hallelujah, God, around people that don't don't know or even know, know him. And I, I testify that I, I'm guilty for not being a witness in times when I should witness. Thank you, Bishop. Amen. Uh, and, 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 and I think with Elder Proctor, uh, we all can say um, we we are guilty. Amen. We didn't open our mouths sometime when we should have opened our mouths. Amen. And, and proclaim the gospel uh, to people because we were thinking this or thinking that or we were caught up in the situation that goes around. Or as Mother said, we were caught up in the cares of this world at that moment. And uh, that overwhelmed us where we couldn't, uh, didn't, uh, use that opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But can you understand that it's the gospel, if we just share the gospel, the power of God will follow us. The signs and wonders will follow us. Not no special person as a bishop or the elder or the mothers of the church. Uh, it can be these mere men before they were made apostles. They were fishermen, couldn't read. <laughs> couldn't write mere men and that's why god said it takes the ig the dumb to confound the wise yes it is because they, they're not gonna have equipped with all the things and i can say that's i'm not equipped with a big uh when i gotta say i wasn't I had all this education and all had all this but the holy spirit educated me and uh i never forget I knew I had the Holy Spirit when God, Holy Spirit opened up the scripture. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And I never, I read that thing and didn't know all, okay, in the beginning of the word, okay. But not until he showed me down in verse 14, and the word became flesh and Man, dwelt good. among us. I, what? Wait a minute. So. Ha, ha. Wait a minute. Then that started me. That's when I said, I can read the King James. I understand thousands and these now. It was the Holy Spirit that opened that up to me. It wasn't nothing that I did, but and it was, I, I, I remember just praying this day. I was sitting in the and it just the light bulb just immediately came on. Hallelujah! And it just that's when God said, "Just feed, feed the word into you. What renews the mind? The word of God. Hallelujah! That's what we, uh, we have to read. The, this is the word." It's going to tell you how you live. You can't run to the world, false doctrine or all that stuff. You run to the Holy Spirit. Run to the Word of God. He'll give you answers. All the promises. Let me, let me read this scripture here in Ephesians, third chapter. And it's in verse 20. Y'all have heard people quote this all the time. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Mm. All that we ask or think. And look at this second part of this. According to the power that worketh in us. <laughs> Exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh in you. That worketh in Elder Wright. You can have all the, all the promises in it. According to the power that worketh in you. Can't be according to the power that working in me, but it does it according to the power that works in each one of us. So that's how he working. Each one of us got a different way to operate, and God uses that power to our limitations. As I would say, I know you should give me all thunder from heaven if I can't even use the uh, be able to walk across the floor. But he, the power that works is in us, so he again equips us to do the work, all he wants us to do is share the gospel. Pray, read the word, study the word. And God said, the Holy Spirit, the power gonna be there. The, 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 the healing, the, 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 the help, the power, the, then the healing is all gonna be there. And he's not actually in your inner circle, in your inner circle. Let them see the Christ in you. And they'll go back and tell people, ho, ho, 
Man, let me tell you about this brother Johnson. I ran across him in the in Walmart, man. This man, he prayed with me. He told him about this Jesus. Somebody there go to tell him, go see him. He, he prays for people. They heal. The word will go out mm. if we spread the gospel and not seek the power or the signs. We just spread the gospel. Amen. Amen. If I got any comments, hallelujah. I hope I didn't go through too fast hallelujah, tonight, but I didn't want to go into uh, um, carry this over into another week when we're trying to finish this uh, thing up on uh, the first one. Um, godly and reflecting godly, godliness into my inner soccer. Next lesson is reflecting godliness in my manner of speech. Oh, my Lord, my God. <laughs> reflecting godliness in our manner of speech what you talking about what's that lady lady that came on tv i think she died maybe but she always came on tv uh let's have a little talk uh i forget what her name is anyway, she was a comedian actor and uh, she said can we talk hey man, what's in our manner of speech reflecting god is in our manner of speech Man, that's, uh, that's going to open, open the eyes up. So look at the lesson coming out of James, the third chapter, verses 1 through 10. Amen. So look at your lesson. Read it. Be prepared next Tuesday night. Amen. So you have something that the Holy Spirit gave you to share with us. I believe the Holy Spirit can use each one of us to share to help us along the way. Amen. So read the lesson. Study the lesson. Don't just read it, study. Ask God, give you something to, 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 to comment in the lesson. Amen. That helps the lesson and, and the teacher. Amen. And the, and the rest, and everybody in the class uh, be better uh, informed. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We plan on having communion Sunday. Amen. Is, uh, next is coming Sunday. We plan on having this communion. Uh, so please, uh, 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 be there, I guess, 11 o'clock on Sunday. Uh, there's nothing else. Nothing else. Amen. Amen. I'm going to hear Elder, Elder Wright, you uh, close out in prayer. I ain't heard from you. <laughs> Since you preached down there, at River of Life. <laughs> oh, but one thing I do want to say uh, before we go is, as Bishop said, just start with the your inner circle. And I'm learning, Bishop said something years ago, and it still sticks with me, but I'm starting to process it now when he was saying, put it back on God. We, we, and what that means is when we pray for people, we always try to put ourselves in it. But if God said that he's going to do it, put it back on him. It's his, it's his word. If they receive it or not, it's God's word. And sometimes we get in our feelings because of people. Sometimes um, they might not want to receive what we are saying or or we pray and or whatever, and they don't seem like it's going. But if God said it, it's his word. We can't, we, we have no say so in that. It's God's word. So I'm learning to put it back on God and and just, just start doing it. I know the devil, gonna, he going to talk. And I'm just, this is me, my process is from 2022. This is, this is a, uh, with me just starting to step out in faith and, and, and do it up. God help me. I, I was, uh, I saw uh, one of my coworkers at a uh, food line and she has, it got to have surgery and stuff and I stopped that food line to pray for. Her. So it, it start, it is, it, 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 it's, it's starting. But you got to step out on faith and move yourself out the equation. Now, I'm not saying that I'm I'm there or I'm, I'm or whatever, but I, I'm seeing what God is saying, and I'm just putting my faith and believing in what God is saying, and I'm just gonna start doing what God is saying. Not saying I'm gonna hit every T, I'm gonna cross uh, dot every I and get get there. But we have all been there when God has told us to or put in our spirit to do something we have not did it. So I'm, I'm starting to process myself here 2022. 
all the I'm, I'm I'm talking about myself to start start at least stepping out on that and putting it back in God's hand and not worry about what what the outcome is because it's God's word. With that said, all hearts and minds are clear. Father God, hey, I bless uh, you. One more thing for you, oh, go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Please, uh, Saints, uh, while we're doing this, this is a time where we can invite people to come to the website. It's real easy. To, I don't think we can make it any easier to get on the site. All you got to do is go to Faith Temple and click on Sunday service. Click on uh, Tuesday night Bible study. If they're going somewhere else on Sunday, that's all right. Invite them to a Bible study on Tuesday. That's why we did our Bible study on Tuesday night instead of Wednesday night. So the ones that that not at church on their Wednesday night can come and join us. Uh, we're not looking for membership. We're looking for people to hear the word of God and let the word of God touch them. Go ahead, Elder. <laughs> oh, oh well, supposed to be the, oh, Father God, heaven be there bless you. We honor you. We thank you, Father. Let us go and God, let the world hear your gospel, Father. And we praise you. We thank you for this word, God. Let it manifest in our hearts, oh God, that we won't sin against you, Father. And then test us out uh, if we go through the rest of the week, Father. We bless you. We thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone.